All right, good Monday evening, everyone. It is uh, April the 3rd um, already. This year is, is, is flying by. Uh, we have more severe weather to talk about. We had a categorical upgrade today from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, we're still about, uh, you know, 12 to 18 hours out of the event. Uh, so we'll talk about that here in just a second. I want to go over this supporter appreciation giveaway. Uh, if you're a supporter on Facebook or a member on YouTube, on YouTube, it's basically supporting us on YouTube is that they call it a member. Um, we are giving away Midland Weather Radios, Noah Weather Radios, all throughout the month of April. Every Saturday in April, we're going to be doing a drawing for uh, these Midland Weather Radios. Basically, it's uh, it's like having a tornado siren in your house, uh, especially if you've been having a lot of nocturnal or overnight uh, severe storms lately. Um, you, a lot of people get to sleep and uh, they need to uh, be awake or awoke or uh, woke up basically. Um, and this thing will do it. It, it emits a 90 decibel alarm. Like I said, it's, having, it's like having a tornado siren in your house, fully customizable. Uh, so come as, if you want to support the work we do today, you can support us on Facebook. It's $4.99 a month. Or you can go over on YouTube, become a member. There's different ways. There's like four or five different ways uh, to uh, support us over there as becoming a member. All right, let's get into uh, the severe weather, uh, the significant severe weather that is coming uh, tomorrow. All right, as always, we're going to go over the hazard map first of the United States. All these uh, basically like brown mustardy colors out here in Arizona, New Mexico, uh, parts of Texas, Oklahoma and Kansas, Southern Colorado. That's all high wind watches. Uh, lots of wind coming out ahead of this system as well. Uh, probably 40, 50, possibly 60 mile an hour gusts uh, across uh, basically from California through Arizona all the way to Texas. Now, this storm is going to be very potent. It's going to be a lot of moisture coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. A lot more heat to deal with as well. We were up in the 80s. Uh, some parts of Texas are in the 90s today. Uh, that's going to be the same case tomorrow as well. A lot more humidity, a lot more instability um, will be in place as well for this severe weather. There will be a few limiting factors. We'll go over that in just a second. But this low is going to track up uh, through the uh, central and northern plains here. Blizzard warnings are in effect out, up here in the Dakotas through northern parts of um, Nebraska. Uh, winter storm warnings out, out here from basically Utah to uh, Wyoming into uh, Wy or, uh, Minnesota uh, for this storm. And up here towards the Black Hills, uh, we're talking probably close to three feet of snow possibly um, in the Black Hills of the South Dakota here as well. So big time snows on the northwest side of this and a lot of severe weather out ahead of it. it all right, let's get started for the severe weather here. Like I said, significant severe weather is possible. we got a moderate risk out uh, for severe thunderstorms from eastern Iowa into northwestern Illinois and from southern Missouri, uh, southwestern toward the Arklatex, basically northeast Texas, northwestern parts of Louisiana, and southwestern parts of Arkansas. Okay, so here's basically a little summary of what could happen. Uh, so a large area of severe potential will exist from Tuesday afternoon into Wednesday morning. A lot of these storms, especially especially down here towards Arkansas, some Missouri parts of Texas, uh, these are going to be uh, after the storms are going to be erupting after the sun goes down tomorrow and this low level jet gets going. Okay. Now we're going to have some storms up here earlier part of the day, probably early afternoon. Basically from like a 12 to 7 time frame up here towards Iowa, northwestern parts of Illinois, north, northeastern parts of, of Missouri. So new, this is the brand new outlook. Out, uh, this is the latest update. This was a 1255 today from the Storm Prediction Center. Now they will have a new update out probably about 1 a.m. in the morning. I will have another update for you over on Facebook in the morning. And I'll have probably a noon update with you all. Uh, on YouTube as well. And I'll probably be live when I do that. Okay? So, strong tornadoes. It's, a, it's, a, it's basically 
basically there. Strong tornadoes, partic and particularly damaging winds, probably 70, 80 plus miles an hour is expected tomorrow. There is, like I said, both afternoon and overnight potential will exist across, especially this region down here in the south, and probably across uh, parts of Illinois as well. And this is going to, this is this is a bad scenario because it's going to include some dangerous nighttime tornadoes across this area. Okay, so now we got this uh, lined out. I'm going to break it down to kind of where where some of these uh, high or these risks are and get some uh, towns on the map here so you all can see. So I'm going to throw this up on the screen so you can see kind of where your uh, this is some of the bigger bigger towns across the region here. So moderate risk basically up towards uh, we got Ava, Missouri, down through Mountain Home, Arkansas, Harrison, uh, down through Marshall, over towards Fort Smith, uh, Russellville, down towards Mena, Hot Springs, uh, and then and a far, far, far southeastern parts of Oklahoma as well. And then we have a um, enhanced risk on the other side of this, Little Rock, Conway, just uh, west of Jonesboro, Arkansas, uh, going up into Missouri as well, and then covering parts of uh, northeastern Texas here, Paris, got down to, down here towards Texarkana, Arkansas, and Texas, of course, um, all in a enhanced risk. Slight risk from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, Tulsa, McAllister, down to uh, probably western or eastern side of Dallas, uh, over here towards uh, Shreveport, and then over towards uh, West Memphis and Jonesboro, Arkansas. Um, a lot of these, like I said, a lot of these storms will be after dark tomorrow. Um, so there will be some supercells that come through, and any supercell that, that develops will have a potential to throw down a strong tornado uh, tomorrow, especially the higher risk areas up here in Arkansas and southern Missouri. Okay, so that'll be out ahead of that line. Then we'll have a big squall line develop behind that and then come through in the early morning hours of Wednesday and sweep across this region as well. So, all right, so let's go north now and, and look at some of the towns here. All righty, so, like I said, right around Springfield, Missouri, this is a moderate risk area out east as well uh, in Missouri, and then enhanced risk for most of the rest of Missouri, The probably the eastern um, three quarters or or a little bit more than that, 80% of uh, Missouri under a, an enhanced risk up to St. Louis. You go up to Springfield, Illinois, and southern parts of Wisconsin even, and then over towards Des Moines, Iowa as well. Enhanced risk, and you have a moderate risk out uh, just east of Des Moines. You go towards Iowa City, uh, the Quad Cities up here, Davenport, and you get over towards Peoria, Illinois, uh, Galesburg, over towards uh, Burlington, Iowa, uh, Mount Pleasant, Fairfield, uh, Keokuk. Uh, those are some of the places under a moderate risk uh, for tomorrow. Uh, like I said, very strong tornadoes, some long track tornadoes possible. We're talking EF2 or, or higher in intensity, large hail, and damaging straight line winds in excess of 70 to 80 miles an hour. So uh, now we're going to go over all the risks real quick uh, for you all. We're going to do a national national view here. All righty, so here is... Um, hold on. All right, here is the tornado outlook for tomorrow. You can see the legend down here. The red areas is 15 to a 29% chance of seeing a tornado within a 25 mile radius in any given uh, in any given location in that red area. Um, so 15 to 29% chance plus the black hatched area basically going from uh, here's a few towns: St. Louis. Little Rock, Springfield, Missouri, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, up to Davenport, Iowa as well. They're all in that black hatched area, which means strong tornadoes are possible in excess of EF2 or greater in intensity in those black hatched areas of uh, eastern Iowa, western Illinois, down through northeastern parts of Missouri, and uh, down through south central parts of uh, Missouri, or Missouri as well, 
and then most of the western three quarters of Arkansas bleeding into northeastern parts of Texas as well. This is the tornado outlook uh, for tomorrow. Like I said, around that around that red uh, area, the 15 to 29 percent chance you have a 10 to a 14 percent chance of seeing a tornado within a 25 mile radius in this yellow area as well. Okay. All right, here is the hail probabilities, black hatched areas. You have a chance of seeing uh, hail in excess of two inches in diameter. We're talking hen eggs to possible tennis ball size hail across, across basically eastern Oklahoma, northeastern parts of Texas, northwestern Arkansas, western Missouri, up through Iowa as well. So, uh, Storm Prediction Center likes to say apple size sometimes as well, but that's certainly possible uh, across this area. All right, here's a straight line wind risk, of course. 30% chance of seeing 60 to 70, possibly 80 mile per hour straight line winds across Arkansas, Missouri, into um, western half or so of Illinois, southern parts of Wisconsin, down here through, through eastern Iowa as well so there's all the risks for tomorrow let's go over some uh, let's go over future radar and show you some of the ingredients that are happening uh to bring this severe weather for tomorrow all right we'll look at temperatures real quick for tomorrow this is just part of the factor here uh so you can can anyone can anyone spot the warm front it's basically from chicago all the way through uh central uh iowa down here through parts of nebraska and then we're going to have this dry line, basically cold front, uh, that comes out. And look at some of these temperatures. Southern parts of Texas could hit 100 plus degrees tomorrow ahead of this system. 90s common across central Texas. Upper 80s basically from Oklahoma through parts of Kansas. Maybe hit 90 in parts of Kansas tomorrow. Southeastern parts of Kansas. And then look at all this heat and humidity just banking up against this warm front up here across southern Iowa. Uh, we're talking uh, low to mid to possibly upper 80s across southern parts of Iowa, western parts of uh, Illinois as well, and then 80s to uh, mid 80s, uh, basically across most of the deep south here as well. All right, so let's go over dew points. This is six o'clock tomorrow night, and we've got a 70 degree dew point in Burlington, Iowa. Like I said, this is just guidance. So um, it could happen or could not. So, But that warm front is going to set up across uh, basically northern parts of, of Illinois and, and through central Iowa here. And you can see where this dry line cold front kind of possibly is across uh, far western Missouri through Kansas, uh, in, getting into eastern parts of Oklahoma, and we have, look at this, Dallas, you're right around a 70 degree dew point. You get up here to the Panhandle of Texas, they have a 13 below zero dew point. So um, if you don't plan on burning, especially if you live in New Mexico, parts of Texas, uh, Kansas tomorrow, the winds are going to be horrible. Uh, 50, 60, possibly mile an hour winds with gusts uh, and then really, really dry uh, conditions so any fire that sparks could spread very rapidly uh, this is basically a perfect storm for a fire uh, a rapidly spreading fire that is across New Mexico in through in through Texas western Texas and the panhandles of Oklahoma as well now you get up out out here towards eastern Texas you got dew points in the 70s 60s up here in Arkansas Missouri you get up here towards northern Illinois where that and uh, Iowa here, where that all that moisture just banking up against that warm front, you have uh, basically uh, moisture pooling uh, just south of that warm front. So that's why the dew points are a lot higher, uh, basically through Iowa and through northern Illinois as well. So, um, like significant severe weather is possible tomorrow. Uh, so let's uh, look at. Uh, Future radar here. All right, so we get this is nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I mean, we got a bl raging blizzard out here in the Dakotas, 
uh, into parts of the northwestern parts of Nebraska. A uh, few showers and storms in Indiana, Ohio here, and parts of uh, Iowa just north of that warm front. Now, as we head towards right around uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you can see these stunner, thunderstorms are starting to develop here, basically across this area and then down here th parts of Texas as well. Uh, so that's when the initiation will start happening at about 4 o'clock. You see these things blow up. This is 5 o'clock tomorrow. This is going to be, um, I think, the coverage... Maybe underdone, especially up here in Iowa, parts of Illinois. Uh, I noticed that with the with the last uh, with the last event in the H Triple R, it didn't show anything in Arkansas until way after uh, late afternoon uh, in parts of Arkansas, and that was not the case. Those storms got going and got going in a hurry um, on on Friday. And, uh, man, just ravaged um, a lot of states uh, with uh, deadly tornadoes. I think there was 90-plus tornadoes uh, actually reported now across that uh, region for Friday into early Saturday's event. So just absolutely remarkable how many tornadoes and destruction happened across, the, across a lot of states here. And uh, just thoughts and prayers go out to all those victims. Uh, there's a lot of help uh, in, those, in those areas. Uh, I know I've, a lot of my, especially my hometown, they sent a lot of they sent a lot of resources from the street department uh, down towards uh, BB and down towards Little Rock as well to help out clearing roads, getting getting uh, roads cleared up and getting the uh, streets back back good so people could travel and get uh, get supplies in and out uh, for for those people. So. Um, Northwest Mississippi and Tennessee, they got hit hard as well. Up in Iowa, uh, got hit as well pretty hard. I know there's a few states. I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm not I'm mentioning a few others, but um, this is gonna this is gonna be a significant event tomorrow as well. We go to six o'clock tomorrow. We got these supercells ongoing. Eastern Iowa over here towards uh, Illinois as well. Uh, storms developing across northeastern parts of Texas, and here comes the storm initiation. Uh, as about 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow across northwestern Arkansas, you can see here comes the supercells coming into Arkansas now, uh, rapidly developing. This is going to be right around dusk tomorrow and, and going into, into uh, overnight hours, which is bad news. Uh, we don't uh, – overnight uh, – Overnight tornadoes is really bad. We don't need those, but uh, looks like this is going to be a mainly overnight event uh, after the sun goes down tomorrow across most of this area. But you can see up here in Iowa, there's supercells developing across central central Iowa now, and uh, some storms across northeastern parts of Iowa as well. Big time storms across central central uh, Arkansas and in, getting into southern Oklahoma or southern sorry southern Missouri as well so nine o'clock tomorrow night storms are just uh just raging through arkansas southern missouri got some supercells up here in iowa as well um and then those get out of here and then here's some more supercells that may develop uh as we get to the wee hours of the morning across arkansas and then here comes a line of storms these are going to be dangerous storms as we get into early morning on Wednesday morning between 1 and 3 o'clock in the morning, it looks like. you got to have a way to get warnings and get woke up. These storms are going to be on top of some people, and they're going to be sleeping. So that you guys need to have a plan in place and have a way to get warnings because you got to take shelter. Um, this, this, these storms can come up in a hurry overnight, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And uh, this is this is not going to be good good news across this area at all. And here comes the squall line developing across Missouri. And big supercells out here, north central Arkansas, southern Missouri, as we get to three o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So this is a very significant threat coming overnight uh, into, uh, like I said, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and then that squall line really develops as we go in through central Arkansas to northeastern parts of Texas as we go to 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. It's still ongoing through Arkansas and then parts of southern Illinois in through uh, parts of southern Indiana as well. 
and then this squall line really gets going as we get through 10, 11, 12, and 1 o'clock in the afternoon on, on Wednesday. And there will be a severe weather threat out ahead of this as well on Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to show you that. So I, I, want to I want you all to take this seriously because if you live in this region, northeast Texas, into Arkansas, and into Missouri for overnight Tuesday into Wednesday morning, there's, they have some uh, serious wording here. Confidence is increasing in the potential for rare and dangerous overnight tornadoes and damaging winds in this area. So um, it's not good news at all. So we, you have to have a way to get warnings tomorrow night after you go to sleep. Some of, this, some of these storms are going to hit uh, later in the evening and then another round may come again early in early into Wednesday morning, we're talking probably midnight through three o'clock in the morning with some of these other new supercells coming through some of these areas here. And then a squall line moving through and as we go throughout the morning, uh, especially through uh, Missouri into Arkansas, northeastern parts of Texas. So uh, most of the day tomorrow is going to be hot and humid basically for this time of year across this area and then as we get to very late late afternoon into um, the evening hours and overnight that is when the risk really ramps up across the area so you have to have a way to get warnings i can't stress that enough all right as we go into wednesday when especially wednesday afternoon into uh early thursday morning we have a slight risk area all the way from um michigan lower michigan here across uh, western parts of New York, all the way through uh, parts of Pennsylvania, most of Ohio, Indiana, uh, Illinois even, through eastern Arkansas, through northern parts of Louisiana, uh, northwestern parts of Mississippi, western half of Tennessee, Kentucky as well. I know this is a slight risk on the now. There may be a categorical upgrade as we go forward, but don't hinge on just oh i'm just under a slight risk nothing's going to happen there is there has been instances where some people has only had a marginal risk out and they had a very significant tornado move through so don't look at the risk so much in your area like i oh, oh, i have a mar marginal risk or slight risk i shouldn't be that worried you need to be worried regardless uh because one storm could change a lot of people's lives it Storms do not fire because of, oh, I'm a storm. I'm going to just go into a slight risk area. That's not how it works. They'll develop wherever they want to, especially where the conditions are, are mostly favorable. It's going to be a now casting situation as we get into Wednesday. And then, like I said, be prepared, have a way to get warnings. And then you need to have a plan in place, especially with your family members. Know where to go when a tornado comes into your area all right so tornadoes or severe weather warnings doesn't matter because you uh no weather radio is basically a, utmost importance of having it in your house because like i said a lot of these storms have been coming during the nighttime hours into the early parts of 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 uh, parts of the day as well everybody's asleep no weather radios will notify you and the ones I'm giving away, of course, they they will notify you. You can customize the warnings so it doesn't go off every time. But I suggest you keep those tornado warnings on. And like I said, it emits a 90 decibel alarm. So you wake up and can take action and protect yourself and your family and get to where you need to go to, for safe shelter. So parts of the parts of it here go to a safe shelter immediately when you're under a tornado or severe weather warning go to go to shelter immediately such as a safe room basement a storm cellar or a small interior room on the lowest level of a, of, of a sturdy building so you want to get as, if you don't have a basement you want to get as many walls between you and the outside as possible so a, a small interior room uh, with no windows um, all walls and all walls around you, uh, so that's a must. Okay, so like another thing, stay away from windows, doors, and outside walls. Those are going to be the first to blow out. 
You do not want to be caught. We saw some videos over the, over what happened Friday. Uh, there's some videos circulating around where people are recording these things and see it coming, and they can't react fast enough. There was one lady that almost got sucked out of the um, out of the doorway into the tornado. So uh, there is a video of that I saw today, and that's just not good. You do not want to be in that scenario. Um, where you put your life at risk, okay? So get to a safe shelter and safe room, basement, interior part of your house, um, away from doors, windows, and outside walls. Do not, and that's another thing, if you're driving, do not go under an overpass or bridge, okay? You're safer in a low or flat location. If you go under, if you go under an overpass or bridge, if a tornado passes over you, it actually creates a tunneling effect under that overpass or bridge. It actually speeds the winds up. So you're going to be more prone uh, to your car being just lifted up and gone, you being gone as well. So the, the winds will actually speed up under that overpass or bridge. There's no protection. There's no protection for you under that. Watch out for flying debris that can cause injury or death. Another thing. When you get into your safe space, you need to have head head protection as a bicycle helmet, batting helmet, anything that will protect your head. Blankets, pillows to put over yourself as well. Get some protection. Also, it says use your arms to protect your head and neck. Another thing, if you cannot stay home or you're in a mobile home or, you know, not a sturdy... Not a sturdy home that, that's available to you. You need to make plans to go to a public shelter, okay? You need to reach out to you, to your local officials on where you can go, possibly. A lot of, a lot of towns uh, open public shelters when there's severe weather so they have a safe place to go, all right? Alrighty, so major severe weather outbreak possible tomorrow. This is just wrapping it up now. So moderate risk across eastern Iowa. Uh, nor or northwestern parts of Illinois, northeastern parts of Missouri, moderate risk, southern southern Missouri, down to northwest parts of Arkansas, and far uh, southeastern parts of Oklahoma. Moderate risk out for them. So we went went over uh, all the thing. I know I really stressed on having a way to get warnings as a lot of these storms are going to come overnight. Okay, I will have another update for you in the morning on Facebook, and then I will have a, probably a noon update or so uh, on YouTube uh, with another video uh, on the latest information. Okay, so like I said, stay weather aware, have a plan in place. A lot of these are going to come overnight. If you have a weather radio, yeah, if you have a no weather radio, that thing will wake you up. Make sure that thing's plugged in, has fresh batteries. Uh, keep your phones charged tomorrow as well. Um, so have a way to get warnings. Stay safe, everyone. Uh, this is going to be a, another significant event that comes through the area. So like I said, have a way to get warnings, and I'll have another update tomorrow afternoon. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Uh, please, like I said, I can't, I can't stress this enough. Have a way to get warnings. The, these storms will come overnight, Tuesday into Wednesday morning. So stay safe, everyone. Have a way to get warnings tomorrow.